being able to safely tie a reef knot or surgeon's knot at depth is a key skill to learn if we aspire to perform more complicated and challenging operations. Tying knots at depth involves largely the same hand movements as when we perform a hand-tied reef knot. However, the key difference is the technique which we use to lay each throw of the knot down in a delicate but definite manner, whilst also maintaining tension on the knot to prevent it from slipping. We may on occasions during surgery have to tie safe and secure knots in deep and narrow anatomical spaces, for example the pelvis. Therefore, being confident and comfortable performing this skill is extremely important. If we were tying a blood vessel lying deep within the abdominal cavity, and we use the same technique of crossing our hands horizontally with every throw, as we do when we perform a simple reef knot, we would run the risk of creating too much tension on the vessel, which may cause it to tear and bleed. In this case, the excessive tension causes the metallic hook to be pulled off its magnetic base. So, we need to modify our technique to prevent this from happening. We shall start by demonstrating the technique with the left hand first. We start by hooking the suture around the structure that we should be tying. To do this, we can use a clip, or we can use our hands, as we're demonstrating in this case. Once the suture is hooked, we then hold the two ends in the identical manner as we would when performing a simple hand-tied reef knot. The only difference is that the hands are positioned close together. We perform the first row of the reef knot using the same movements as we would for a normal hand tie. But, rather than the hands crossing at 180 degrees to lay the throw down, the right hand moves away from us slightly, but then maintains its position whilst pulling slightly upwards on the suture to maintain some gentle tension. The left hand rearranges itself to hold the suture between the thumb and the middle finger, and the left index finger pushes the knot gently down towards the hook. As you can see, the important thing is that as we snug each throw down with the left index finger, the finger presses down beyond the hook and not onto it, as if we were to apply direct pressure onto the blood vessel. This could cause the blood vessel to tear. For the second throw, the left hand changes to an underhand position, and the same movement is carried out as we would for a normal hand-tied reef knot. The right hand is then moved slightly towards us and maintains gentle upward traction on the suture. This prevents the knot from loosening between throws. The second throw is then laid down, again using the left index finger to press beyond the hook to ensure that the reef knot is snug down and secure. We then repeat the same actions as we did for our first throw, again maintaining upward traction with our right hand, as we snug what is in this case our final throw. How many throws you need to perform will be dependent upon the type of suture material being used. Obviously, more throws will be required when using slippy monofilament sutures, as opposed to the more grippy braided sutures. So let's take another look at hand tying at depth with the left hand. As with any reef knot, it's important that we cross our hands with each throw, as if we don't, then we'll create a slip knot or a granny's knot, which is less secure than our reef knot. Now looking at tying at depth with our right hand. As we've already mentioned, the hand actions in performing the knot are the same as when we perform a standard reef knot. But the key difference is in maintaining the upward tension with our left hand, as the right hand snugs down each of the throws. We can see how the right index finger is used to gently lay each of the throws down by pressing beyond the hook and not directly onto it. The second and third throws of the knot are performed with the same hand movements as we would for any reef knot. And as each of the throws has been snug down with the right index finger, the left hand maintains gentle upward tension to prevent the knot from loosening. Again we should note that the hands do cross, albeit to a lesser extent than when we perform a normal hand tie. But this crossing of the hands is essential to ensure that we actually form a reef knot and don't accidentally form a slip knot or a granny's knot.